Hello and welcome to Pokesports, a competitive Pokemon podcast. I'm Mike and I play with one Pokemon on the field. I'm Kevin. I play with one pal on the field. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Uh-oh. Not three seconds I said in. the thing. I did it. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, let's let's address the uh, teacup oh. elephant in the oh, room. Oh. Oh, what's the T-fent. big one called? Mammo crest or mammo oh. something? Swine or mammoth. I don't know. Big grass guy that you see right away. Big grass guy. Big, bra- big, big grass friend. Um, Pal World it came out last week. And we don't will worry, talk about Pokemon today, guys. We will so talk about around. Pokemon, yes. <laughs> don't worry. This is not a competitive Pal World podcast. This is not Pal Sports. <laughs> no, we are not there. Uh, but it did come out. It would be unwise to not mention it because, of course, the competitive Pokemon community, as well as just the rest of the Pokemon community, was talking about it. Yeah. Because for a long time, a lot of people were dissatisfied with Pokemon. And then something else that lightly referenced, lightly, that referenced Pokemon <laughs> uh, came out. And those people tried it, or those people didn't try it with a vengeance. And it happens. Mm. And Kevin and I went and tried it. And yeah. you know what? It's fun. It scratches the Minecraft itch for me. So yeah, yeah. Me and Mike have these like subtle phases in mm-hmm. uh, like every couple of years where we'll just play Minecraft and like really play Minecraft oh, for about really four days. <laughs> for how many days you said? About four. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, about four days. We just like play twelve hours of Minecraft a day, mm-hmm. and then suddenly it all ends, and we don't know why. It just happens. Yeah, Pokemon has always been my. The, the, my comfort, the thing that I return yeah. to at the end of the day. Uh, but if other games like, you know, Skyrim is a big one for oh, me, yeah. it's a good uh, one. Minecraft for Skyrim is, is fun. Cause like I'll play through a regular game of that for maybe a day. And then I'll remember that cheats exist and I'll start using those cheats. Like definitely really using those cheats. Like I'm going at like 2000 miles a minute. And I just want to see how high I can jump. And I just want to see like how many times I can shout uh, per second. I feel that I'm cheating in Pal World right now. So well, there you go. There you go. I decided, but when I start uh, to cheat, that's when things uh, kind of slow down. Kind of slow down. Yeah, that's, that's when it's like I, the end of the phase. I, you know what? Uh, our friends were mentioning because this is like the third time we're playing through the beginning of the game again. Because in order to play on a multiplayer server, you have to restart the game to yeah. play separately on the server. They said that they're going to work on that. I mean, it's an early access game. What can we expect? But um, yeah, I, one of our friends mentioned that, hey, we can just speed up the EXP until we get back to where we were. And you said no. Yeah. Because, yeah, you, we want the general experience. We want the grind experience. And mm-hmm. I kind of get that. Like, why are we going to rush our way there? I mean, the, the option is there. If you own the server, you can essentially do anything you want with this game. This game is open source for the most part. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, no, I kind of agree with you. I, I careening toward the end of the game is the quickest way for me to get over it. Mm-hmm. I, I had this same kind of thing when I used to play. Like I used to play like Ragnarok online when I was younger, <laughs> like 10, 15 years ago. And like it would that was that same kind of feeling is like if I went on a custom server that had like 10 times the experience, I get to level 100 quick. Great. I get to class up and change my class quick. Great. But then once that's done, I'm like, okay, well, I've I've kind of hit the mountaintop here. Uh, now what do I do? Now yeah. what? Yeah, especially with this being an early access game, like let's let's you know enjoy the early access and 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 see the game for what it is first. Anyway, that's Power World. This is a game that we picked up while at Charlotte. Ooh, you, Ooh. you feel that transition? Ooh. Feel us going back to Pokemon? Way last weekend, which was when was that? Uh, January 19th to 21st, I guess just 20th, 21st was yeah. the Charlotte, uh, regional championship. And Biggest how in many history, people folks. were there? So A many bajillion. people were there. We got 845 attended. 845 video game masters, uh, were at Charlotte convention center. Now, and honestly, for how big this tournament was. It didn't feel that massive. No, they opened up a lot of walls. Yeah. yeah. When you it have the right amount of space, it's really nice. What are the, yeah. those called? Sky walls? Uh, air walls. Wall. Yeah. Air walls. I was close. 
you were so close. So, so close. <laughs> Sky Air? It's, yeah, Skyrim? <laughs> air, air Rim? <laughs> Uh, and it was a, it was a fun time. Um, like all regionals that, that Kevin and I go to with, with our group, we had a very nice time with it. Uh, I don't think we ever talk about this, but like, usually when we go to regionals, there's like this, this group of people who will go with us, usually all East coasters or people from like Atlanta. I don't actually know where Atlanta is in Uh, East coast, East coast. Okay. South, South United States, East coast, right next to Florida. That's the next one up. Oh, oh, okay. So like, mm. neat. Um, we, yeah. So our East Coast friends, we usually grab like an Airbnb. Uh, this place was a little warmer than Canada, New Jersey. So mm. uh, it felt really nice for us. But for like the Floridians, they were like, I'm cold, man. It's so cold in 50 so degree cold. weather. Oh, what am I doing? No. Nah. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's snowstorming back at our homes. And we're just <laughs> like, yeah, this is amazing yeah no i'm I'm facetiming my wife and i'm like that nah, sucks to be you <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's it it's a fun time being in that airbnb because you get to do so much outside of the actual event um we always have like a little corner in the in the uh convention center where we all meet up after our games too so it's like you know we're always touching base after after each of our games it's a fun time mm-hmm also, shout out to everyone that did say hi. There yes. were a couple of people that uh, did say, oh, were you there? I didn't find you. If you didn't find us, you weren't in the right spot because we don't move. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, we, we always find the same spot to go. Uh, so we're going to be talking about our, our uh, experience in the regionals, of course. Um, but I, I think first I want to I want to just kind of take a step back saying, you know, how did you how did you feel about charlotte in general uh, uh, of the the regional the experience the place what do you think listen i went into charlotte regionals with very little prep and very little expectations uh, i'm kind of working my mentality towards the i don't ever think i'm gonna win a regional mm. right i think i can get day two i mean i'm still working on trying to do that I, i'm working towards just improving as a player having fun while i'm there and also uh, realizing I'm a better commentator than player. But I know that all sounds really? very negative, but mm. I feel like I had a very good eye-opening experience while there. I was humbled. I was really humbled because I did bring a very comfort pick. I brought Hard Trick Room. You know, this is the same thing that I got top 16 at the last MSS with. And I went 3-4 and I dropped. And that's fine, right? 3-4 drop. I've gone 6-3 multiple times over. Maybe Red Jeff isn't the regulation for me. Who knows? I'm going to try again in Orlando. But 3-4 drop, and I'm okay with that, right? I feel yeah. like a lot of people, once they they get a negative rating, they let it get to their head. Listen, your mental game has to be strong, folks. <laughs> like, you can't play VGC and not have mental. You really need to just not let it get to you. And there are good players that drop sometimes. I won't mention yeah. any names because I'm sure they don't want me to. But there's a bunch of good players this time around that did drop at three losses, you know, because it happens sometimes. VGC, someone's got to win and someone's got to lose. If you get paired up with two very good players next to each other, one of them will lose. Right. That yeah. is the way it is. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And I mean, that has, it it does have a lot to do with skill. There is a lot of skill in this, in this game uh, Mm -hmm. and a lot of decision-making and a lot of, uh, you know, prep that can make you win more consistently, but there's also uh, a a little bit of luck in that. And Mm -hmm. and you kind of have to make your peace with the fact that sometimes you get crit, sometimes you miss moves, sometimes you uh, get a secondary effect that doesn't have a very high chance to happen but when yeah. it does, it, it, you know, really, really helps the other uh, team or yourself. Um, and, and just kind of being OK with that is, is huge, huge. Uh, understanding why you lost is hmm. is really big, too. If you're always saying, you know, what, oh, I got crit or oh, I got I got paralyzed or try attack know, frozen, try attack frozen. <laughs> if that if that is your consistency, then that might be a bit of an issue mm-hmm. uh, that, you know. Maybe the the issue isn't quite with that, but maybe it isn't. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, but it was a fun time. I had absolutely. No I think I think it's again meeting everyone that we met mm-hmm. while there, meeting our friends that we haven't seen since 
how the how last long now? thing that Toronto all, regionals. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them since NAIC. You know, um, that that that's what makes the experience worth it. It's not these little pixels on the on the you know on the Switch screen that sometimes decide to freeze you. It's it's <laughs> what you do while you're there, you're, you're, which you're definitely not salty about. I promised myself I wouldn't talk about it because honestly. <laughs> I got frozen one game. What did I do the other game? Drop the ball. My fault. Right? right. There you go. Right? <laughs> and everybody, everybody remembers the one time that they got crit or the one time that they got frozen, but they don't remember the one time that, you know, they didn't understand the 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 uh, interaction between Wellspring mm-hmm. Ogre Pun and Gouging Flame and how it doesn't actually uh, one hit KO when you, uh, <laughs> when you, when you do, a, do an Ivy Cudgel. Um, so, I mean, yeah. I I as well went um what was my final score? I think I ended up four and five. Yeah, four and five. Yeah. Um you played it out. See if you I played points, it out, yeah. but also because like score. I was doing pretty okay for for a little while, which I tend to do. Um I tend to do pretty okay until the very end when I get tired or when I get uh uh in my own head about certain matchups. Mm-hmm. But this time around felt a little different to me because in the middle of my run. Uh, I went up against this this matchup that I just couldn't figure out. And I, I have to give a big shout out to uh, my round, I want to say six, opponent Nick, who uh, I, I sat right in front of him. I was like, how do I get past? And who was it? Oh, I can't even remember who it was. It might have been uh, uh, Expanding Horse. I remember I had a no, no, real it was, big problem. It was Blurse, that. wasn't it? It was Blurse. Yeah, of it course. Was Blurse. It was Blood yeah. Moon or Saluna. I was having a really, really tough time getting through Blood Moon or Saluna with my balance team because it would so just. So were a lot of people, apparently. Right. Looking because it would just <laughs> be sent out uh, in the back. It would, no, sorry, it was in the back. Uh, in the front was, oh, I really should have prepared. A giraffe. That. Giraffe. Giraffe and something else. So for a giraffe was out there to, tell you to what the set up trick room, please do. I think it's for me. It might have been uh, this one for a giraffe, Flutter Main. Uh, Hisuian Arcanine, Rapid Striker, Shifu, Tornadus, and Blurs. Or yeah, something along those something lines. Something along those lines. If where, it wasn't a Hisuian Arcanine, it was an Ente or something. Right. Yeah. Where the big thing is they needed to set up a trick room, and then Blood Moon or Saluna would come out and just go to town with Terra Normal, mm-hmm. Hyper Voice, or Blood Moon, or whatever. And my team just wouldn't work. So I was sitting, sitting in front of him, and I was like, hey, I, I just how do I break this? Like, can we mm. figure this out real quick? Because <laughs> I, I mean, know after busy, he won, but after he won, it's to his advantage if I if I start winning, right? Because that helps his resistance. Yeah. So uh, he was like, "Okay, uh, you have snarl on your on your team because you like uh, to use. Well, I think it was raging bolt Ente. that was using Ente. Yes, <laughs> I had Ente with with snarl, mm. and he was like, "That's all you need to press. Just press snarl a bunch of times." Blood Moon or Saluna can't come out once, or if it does, it gets a minus one to special attack, and then it's completely hard nerfed. And then the next game, my very next round, I played against the exact same team. The exact same Blood Moon or Saluna with, with the rest of that. And he, while my opponent played it a little differently, I, I did the exact, that exact thing. I was just like, mm-hmm. okay, you know what? Let's snarl. Let's just like really, really press snarl for this. And I won. And I went <laughs> over to, to Nick afterward and I shook his hand and I'm like, thank you. You just uh, saved my next round. So what did so, we learn today, folks? Anyway, just press I snarl. That was, that was a pretty cool, uh, <laughs> cool moment. No, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah. Just press that's snarl. That's the end of the podcast, right? Yeah, the end. What else do you do? Oh. So if you learned anything, it's just click snarl, right? Honestly, yes. That's <laughs> all you end. gotta do. And you know why is because I was so used to physical, 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 physical among physical. us, physical, physical. And I like <laughs> to, see, to see Blood Moon or Saluna out and all these other special attackers like, you know, your for giraffes and such. I, I was like, I, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm just going to attack and hope that I KO something. And no, you know what? I know what it was. It was Wellspring Ogre Pond and for giraffe. And I was like, follow me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the, the wellspring ogre, ogre pump would, uh, would follow me and the for giraffe would set up trick room. And 
in my mind, I was like, okay, I need to take out the uh, for Red Giraffe or the Wellspring Ogre Pond. Mm -hmm. I know that the Wellspring Ogre Pond is going to follow me, so I might as well attack into the for Red Giraffe and get redirected. Or I might as well double into the, the Ogre Pond, assuming that I'm going to be KOing that. Little did I know that they wanted you. They to do want that. that. <laughs> yeah. They do not want the the Wellspring Ogre Pond out. They want me to knock that out, set up Trick Room, have Blood Moon or Saluna out on the beginning of turn two, mm. and destroy me right off the bat. You gave them what they want. You fell for the Trick Room bait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And so from then on, I was like, okay, no, I need to, I need to just snarl. I need to play this slow. I need to use attacks that, that don't necessarily get the KOs, but, you know, can, can keep me alive while I keep the Blood Moon or Saluna far away from me. Mm -hmm. That's why I love whenever people delete like a, a redirector and a dust clops. I'm like, okay, go ahead. Right. I will attack myself if I have to. I will click protect <laughs> twice in a row if I have to. You have no damage on the field, my friend. You right. must switch to do something. Yeah. Yeah, you have some time to time to set up. So anyway, after that, I uh, ended up losing the next two rounds. Partially, you know, uh, my my mental game wasn't wasn't fully ready. Uh, I needed to practice a little bit more. My stamina wasn't there. I was tired at the end of the day. Um, so, I mean, it, I didn't perform as well as I wanted to either, but I also know how much I practiced going into this, so I wasn't really expecting myself to do very mm -hmm. well. Uh, the point is, as usual, to go and have fun, to go and do some fun stuff. We filmed our 200th episode there, um, so that's always going to have a very special place in my heart. Um, also, big shout out to Kyle at, uh, uh, I've forgotten the the name of it. The podcasting the studio. podcasting studio, yeah. Um, for I yeah I've forgotten everything about Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? Was what you were happened? you even there? What happened that weekend? <laughs> we played Power World <laughs> at the Airbnb. Pretty much. Not me looking it up right now. I remember waiting in line at Insomnia Cookies and then deciding that the line was too long, and then just being like, "Let's order it at mm -hmm. the Airbnb." You know, I don't think we have an Insomnia Cookies up in Canada. I don't have Windows um, either. Right. But there, there have been a couple of places where I've seen it, and I'm like, "Ooh, that that seems pretty good." We stood in line there for like an hour, and it did not move. Mm -hmm. So we were like, "All right, let's just let's Uber eats that." And then that took two hours. And <laughs> it's like we expected and then we, got half the we expected a difference from like waiting there and waiting at home. Like we yeah. thought that it, we ordered from the exact same dang place, and we're just like, maybe they'll be faster if we're at home. <laughs> it's coming from the same place. That's the thing, right? And like. There, <laughs> I think the difference is, oh, instead of waiting at the place, we can do something else for two hours, you know? Right, yeah. yeah. We can play Pal World. We can play, mm. uh, you know, other games. Oh, what was that I game that we played? Yeah, yeah. I introduced you guys to Boomerang Foo, yeah? Or yeah. are you talking about Nidhogg? N Nidhogg was the one I got really into. Boomerang Foo yeah. was fine. I sucked at it. But Nidhogg, I felt like I got, you know, I, I had a rhythm going. <laughs> yeah. So big shout out to uh, the Game Corner for, for uh, you know, being with us at the Airbnb. Big shout out to our mod Pierre, PA, who is amazing and just such a fun hang. Like, <laughs> dude, like he. <laughs> down for anything. I he spent is down for anything. Yeah. Four or five hours watching wrestling with Pierre. Pierre has absolutely no idea what a wrestling is. <laughs> yeah. He was down yeah. for it. He was down for a big shout out to Bruno as well for joining us at our Airbnb, even though he didn't stay at the Airbnb. He, he had his hotel room, but uh, he, he still took the time out, out of anyway. his day to yeah. go and hang out with us. Awesome guy. Uh, really cool. Really cool dude. Um, but nevertheless, am I missing anybody from the Airbnb, by the way? That would be so embarrassing. <laughs> if no. somebody messages me tomorrow and is like, hey, man. Shout you out to Becca for me. marrying Harrison. Of I don't course. Know. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Becca. Okay, cool. <laughs> Becca's, Becca's going to thank you for that one. Um, all right. Set trick well, let's room talk coward. About, set trick room <laughs> coward. You won't. <laughs> set trick room, you won't. Uh, you know what? That sounds like a good, uh, a good pin. Not that a was good our pin. friendship bracelet. 
Yeah. It was S Y T R Y C or something. I don't know. Set your trick room, you coward. Oh, just S T R Y C then. Oh, okay. But I feel like That'd you know good, we like, have that shirt. on a shirt. Yeah. Set trick room, you coward. Crit mattered. Set trick room, coward. <laughs> I feel like crit mattered has been done by some. No, it hasn't. I googled it. No one do it. Really? No one do it. You're not allowed. Don't to. do it. You're not allowed. Don't do it. Don't You're do not. it. <laughs> I've sat here for so long thinking that crit mattered has been a. No. There's shirts wow. that say critical mattered, but that's not the same. That's not it. That's, that's not, not it at not all. That's not what they say. <laughs> that is not what they say. Okay. Uh, let's let's move on. We've got the uh, top winners uh, from from uh, Charlotte. That the place winningest that we went. people. The winningest people. Uh, and one of them is Canadian. Oh, ah. yeah. And six of them are from the U.S. So uh, number eight was Neil Patel. Neil. Is that Neil VGC? Yes, it is. Hey, good job, Neil. Uh, walking away with 100 championship points and $1,000. It's sad I heard walking wake with one, with 100 championship points and $1,000. He walked awake with... Uh, <laughs> He's walking people. awake? Mm-hmm. Uh, Toler Webb. Uh, congratulations, Toler. Ended up seventh with 100 CP and one thousand dollars. Enzo Re- Re- Rishi uh, with one thousand uh, one thousand dollars. One thousand CP. CP and one thousand CP. They were just like, you know what? You do you take take all of it. It's yours. <laughs> You're going you to world for the six? next four years. <laughs> six was our our mystery number. Uh, and Stephen Mia, <clears throat> who uh, came in fifth. Man, I need to clear my throat real bad. Mike's dying. I got the next one, guys. Don't worry. Arbin Tumeneng with 130 CP, $2,000. New Jersey area out there. Look at you. Uh, we got Luca with 130 CP and $2,000. Third place. Nicholas Donnelly, first time in day two of a tour, managed to get all the way to second dang place in the biggest no VGC tour. Rocking 160 CP with $4,000. And number one. Drum roll, please. Mr. Wolfus Glickus. Congratulations, Wolf. You did it again. <laughs> the Wolfus strikes again. The Wolfist again. of the Glick. <laughs> now, With, Nicholas. Now, we'll, we'll talk about Nicholas later. But yeah, Wolf Glick, congratulations. Got his uh, 2024 Worlds invite as if he didn't already have it. Uh, yeah, like 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> 200 championship points and $6,000. I'm glad that paid off He could probably just walk in. Like, hey. How's everybody? He probably doesn't need the wristbands, you know? The no. security guard's yeah. probably just like, oh, it's Wolf. Like, let him in. <laughs> <laughs> There's one. <laughs> I have the giggles about that. Um, one, of the, one of the staff, is, it's like their first, first day on the job. A wolf walks up, and, he's, and, and they're like, no, nah, you, you can't enter if you don't have a wristband. And Wolf like, just kind of gives them the look. Like, do you, you know who I am? And then another person comes and walks up a little oh. bit more senior. Do you know what? What are you doing? <laughs> Let go, go. Will, Wolf, come on in. Come on in. This didn't happen, by the way. This is this is my head cannon. Uh, <laughs> come on in. And then they're like scolding the new guy like, you don't do that. <laughs> He's royalty around these parts. Wolf's well, pretty good at the game, huh? He's pretty good at the game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we we're going to talk about the top four, of course. Uh, Arbin uh, Tumanang coming in with a Fluttermane. What's oh, your favorite team? Yeah. Tornadus, Ursaluna, Urshifu, Fluttermane, for a Giraffe, and Arcanine Arcan- Hisuian form. Whoa. Uh, so this is a version of a team that I've been seeing a ton mm-hmm. from this regional, which includes just for a Giraffe, period. The four good stuff for a giraffe moon cord. Like, that's that's what this feels like. And mm-hmm. we've talked about this before with how uh, priority heavy this meta is. You need some form of priority blockage or else you're going to struggle a little bit. And for a giraffe, look, if you brought a for a giraffe in top eight, then congratulations, you made top four already, apparently. Because all three for a giraffes here made it in top four. That's nice. Yeah, absolutely. For a giraffe, did just, it, it just did so well. Yeah. So well this turn, this this tour. Uh, you know who didn't do as well this tour as I thought? Uh Iron Crown. 
Yeah. I yeah, thought I mean, at the beginning, one. after round two, I was like, I've seen so many Iron Crowns today. And so many people have been saying that they've seen so many Iron Crowns. Expanding Horse is here. Mm -hmm. uh, but only Toller managed to bring Iron Crown to top eight. It's a, it's a decent mon. Don't get me wrong. No hard mm -hmm. trickerman top eight. Rest in peace. But it, it looks like th may maybe this is what I'll try out for Orlando. It looks like a balanced trick room team is more consistent for 15 rounds of Swiss. That That is what it looks like. That's what it feels like. Right. You, you have four good Pokemon, a bear and a giraffe. And that's all you really need there. Right. Right. Uh, Luca in third came in with a Wellspring Ogre Pond, a Fluttermane, a Gouging Fire, uh, only one in top eight, interestingly enough. Uh, Rillaboom, Chempow, and King Gambit. So, yeah. I mean, here it is. It's, it's, you know what it is. It's physical, 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 physical Amoongus. No. It's physical, physical, physical Fluttermane. Now, the thing with this team and a big reason, and, and this archetype in general, this is like one of the most. Um, niche things that gouging fire can do that Entei can't do, and that's mm. get a booster speed booster and click howl. And that next to things like Ogre Pond, next to things like King Gambit, next to things like Chen Pao, dish out way too much damage. And then you still have the King Gambit there so that people are at least a little bit weary to bring Incin against you, unless you're Wolf Click, and Wolf Click just like swaps an Incin in front of a King Gambit. Uh, that's what happened during his match with Luca, by the way. Yeah. Mad lad. But, you know, that team can get very snowball-y very quickly. And, mm -hmm. you know, Gouging Fire is a pretty decent mom when you put on a balanced team like that. It's really interesting to see Gouging Fire in there. I personally went and used Entei because I like the Snarl utility, but I, I love what you were saying earlier about um, Protosynthesis speed on Gouging mm -hmm. Fire and having Howl in there. That yeah. it really sets your team up for some really good Raises stuff. Raises you and your yeah. ally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's what um Dragon Cheer wants to be, but it's <laughs> would that be Dragon Cheer actually? Um, could that be? I if think both Pokemon had a razor claw, I guess. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh if it wasn't banned. But yes, Nicholas Donnelly is a prime example of you never know who's better than better than you and just isn't at the regional yet. <laughs> <laughs> but Nicholas, congratulations. Wow, coming second. First time in day two. That's that's wonderful. Nicholas, the Iron Hands believer? The Iron Hands believer. Nowhere in top eight do we see an Iron Hands. I'm scrolling down right now to try and find another Iron Hands. Currently, I'm at 30. You haven't seen it. another one. You Am won't really find it. No one believes. It? Am I really not going to find it? I'm I scrolling a, down. I'm at 64 right now. I made a not hot take in a recent video. Not I, until 67. Go ahead. I made a hot take in a recent video, and I'm going to mention it here just in case you guys don't watch that video. Iron Hands will win Orlando because I Ooh. think by April, people will realize that they're stupid. <laughs> and people they, are going to realize that they've forgotten what something. What are they doing? <laughs> yeah. This is the Pokemon that we used with no ability. Remember? Right. <laughs> right. It, oh, that's wild to think about. Huh? Yeah. There's like a, a very small handful of Pokemon that we're bringing with absolutely no ability use case. Like all of the iron Pokemon, iron crown as well. Like it, we, we don't have an ability for it. <laughs> the, I mean, the, what's what are iron crowns bringing right now? They're bringing booster. Yeah. Okay. So they're giving well, themselves sense. the because they, they want psychic terrain. They don't want. Yeah. So they're using terrain. their ability, yeah. but they're using their ability in place of their item. Yeah. <laughs> the the thing that I think uh, Nicholas did that adapted very well is a big reason Iron Hands kind of fell off a little bit was all the intimidate pressure that was coming into the meta. And also just, mm -hmm. you know, physical Pokemon in general kind of saw a little bit of fallout, but uh, physical fit. <laughs> Yo, it caught me off guard. <laughs> so it must be weird hearing yourself while yes. you're talking. So what Nicholas ended up doing was he ran a clear amulet on it. Mm. So now you can't intimidate spam me. You can't pivot on me with parting shot. I could still just punch you and make you sad. 
Also, Ryan CC on it over Drain Punch, so a lot more offensive variant of uh, Iron Hands too, probably to make up for that for that lost power there. That's really interesting to run Clear Amulet on your on your Iron Hands. Mm-hmm. Don't even have to worry about the the indim- intimidates. You just, you just stay in, yeah. I mean, you I lose a lot I'm... of special defense, but still, mm-hmm. it's worth. I know I didn't mention the the team yet. This is Iron Hands uh, Blood Moon Ursa Luna. I, I always want to call it Blur Saluna now because of that's you. its name. <laughs> I mean. Uh, Tornadus Incarnate, uh, Furry Giraffe, Urshifu, Single Strike, and mm-hmm. Ogre Pond Hearth Flame, which I thought was interesting uh, for, for Nicholas's team to see a uh, Hearth Flame Ogre Pond until I also saw it on Wolf's team. Mm-hmm. I mean, the top two teams have Ogre Ponds. All the other Ogre yeah. Ponds are, are Water Ponds at the bottom of the list other than like Toller's team in seventh place, who has a Fire one as well. I, it's weird because the last regional that we talked about, Portland, it was water ponds everywhere. Now yeah. this regional, it's fire ponds. So it's like this argument will never end on which ogre pond is the best ogre pond because both of those are pretty darn good. <laughs> I think I can tell you which ogre pond is the worst ogre pond. <laughs> <laughs> which one? And I'm going to leave it at that. I'm, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to let them decide. Is it is it the defiant one? Is it the cornerstone one? I'll never tell. Um, and then Wolf Glick came in first with uh, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Incineroar, Fluttermane for Ridge Giraffe, Ogre Pond Hearth Flame, and Rillaboom. This is the most good stuff team that I've ever seen in my life. And this is just <laughs> this is somebody who knows how to play the team better than most. Yep. I don't want to say better than anybody, but certainly better than most. A lot of cool little niche things here that I'm looking at. I'm looking at uh, Fluttermane with Grass Terror and Combine. Like, that is very, very centered against. I'm going to live every single Grassy Glide and every single Surging Strike that you send my way. They're running... Wolf is running Ghost Terror on Zinsen. Usually that's something different. Poison Terror on Rillaboom? What is... What Mm. can that even be for? (laughs) So he's really focusing on the Terra types. He knows his matchups. Yeah. I don't know what Poison Terra is for that threatens Rillaboom. I mean, I guess. Well, oh, Landorus Incarnate. You poison okay. Terra, what are they? Oh no, then they could just hit you with a ground move. I'm confused. See, but that's the thing. I was I was just thinking about that. How, you know, for Rillaboom, when it comes out and says Grassy Surge, like that is your anti-earthquake measures for the rest of your Pokemon. So why don't we also lump Rillaboom in on that? Mm-hmm. You know, you can now tear a poison and still survive some earthquakes, though I truly it doesn't help you with earth powers. Don't know what <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Don't know what we're what we're doing with that one. It's brave too. I mean, I guess it's safe because at the same time, Rillaboom can come in and stop Psy Spam or expanding yeah. force in general, and it doesn't care if it's a poison type or not, because psychics won't have the expanding force boost. I don't know. Right. It's also Soul Vest, so it, it could probably help lift some things there too. Anyway, very curious to see the uh the the outline of this one later on when he when he wants to get into that. Uh curious what the poison roller booms there for. But of course we got Urshifu Rapid Strike with uh with water, uh water terra, surging strikes, close combat, uh aqua jet, U turn, the huge. Mm-hmm. No ice the spinner on that one. No ice spinner on your Urshifu. Yeah, I do think the combine on the Fluttermane uh, Fluttermane's really interesting. Uh, the Ferrigiraffe is just kind of a staple. You kind of have to have Ferrigiraffe these days, what with all the the priority running around with your, uh, you know, extreme speed users, with your Sucker Punch users, with your, you know, um, it's a throat spray. Hey, throat. It's a throat spray. A uh, hyper voice one. Are they That's all true? Them? Yeah, no, not all of them are. Not all. Nicholas was running in prison trick room on his. Are they all different giraffes? All three uh, of them? No, okay. It looks like Arbin was also running a throat spray with hyper voice. I guess that's just mm. the set. But See, this I'm, one's not, Shock. Yeah. I'm not familiar with uh, fur giraffe using throat spray because most of the people that I've been facing with fur giraffes brought a Blood Moon or Saluna who would have throat spray on oh, that. So, what is, what is the Blurse running? That's a good point. Uh, the Blurse on Arbin's team. Orb. Yeah. Okay. Well, that okay. makes sense. Arbin's team was running... Was it Life Orb? Yeah, also Life Orb. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the two Blurses that I checked are all Life Orb. Mm. Fair enough. 
It also well, makes sense. It's essentially a throat spray, but earlier. There you go. Uh, so that was Charlotte. Charlotte was, a little, again, a really fun time. Just mm. really brought my love of uh, of regionals back. Um, kind of after a, a bit of a dry couple of months of, of not going to it. Because mm. they, they bunched so many of them up in, in like the first three months of the of the circuit. And then they took that December off. And December to January kind of really felt strange compared to when there were, were regionals yeah. all the time, you know? And the other time you went to regional too, it's like, it was the week after your wedding. So it's like, your mind wasn't there, dude. <laughs> My your mind, mind wasn't there. Yeah. What the heck? Your mind was worried about like, how am I affording this wedding? It's not, well, it's not like, how am I going to defeat this, uh, Giraffe. Yeah, to be fair, that is still my thought process and probably will be for the rest of my life. How am I going to afford this wedding? Um, so you can go to GoFundMe.com slash Michael. <laughs> link in the description. No, no. Um, <clears throat> so there was that. Let's move on to the Global Challenge. Oh, yeah, that's happening. We've got the first Global we got the global Challenge 1 for 2024. I hope Otherwise known as the doesn't 20... consume my life before that. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise known as the 2024 Japan National Championships Qualifier Number 1. Oh, yeah, they do Numero different one. things over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to be running from February 2nd to 4th. Uh, signups are open from literally yesterday, if you are oh. listening to this when this comes out. Uh, and we'll be going on until February 1st I have when no the tournament team starts. I might just copy one of those Blurks teams and call it a day. I mean, Full I wouldn't blame you. It's really good. And there are going to be, presumably, a lot more people playing. So mm. you should be okay if you're playing a team like that. Uh, the prizes for the official comp- uh, the online competition, I think, are really cool. I mean, it's all championship points, but I think it's really cool how many championship points they're giving out. Oh, they're uh, chucking them at us. Whoa. They're chucking them out. Chucking wow. them out. The winner of this thing gets 160 championship points. The runner-up gets 130 championship points. The semifinalists get 100. Fifth to eighth gets gets 80. All the way down until 513th to 1024th, who are getting five championship points. That wow. must mean they're expecting thousands of people to to participate in this Mm -hmm. i mean they they probably will be will be getting that many because this is the whole country of japan has to play this if they want to play pokemon too right right? this is their qualifiers for nats um wow that's actually insane i don't know which one i see the thing is don't get me wrong i love the tpci circuit i think it's cool that we get to travel go to different regionals do a lot of cool things I kind of like the Japanese version of doing things as well, too. It's a lot less in person, a lot more. Let me prepare online. Let me Mm -hmm. prepare at home. Let me not show everyone my secrets for every single regional. Let me not have two middle aged men talk about me on a podcast every two weeks because a regional happens. That's Uh, so, I mean, it's a pretty interesting prep experience. I mean, obviously, the best of one Swiss stuff is kind of stupid, but it is what it is. Yeah, that that certainly is what that is. Uh, I, I find it interesting how the uh, the pool works of of people in this, where you're facing off against the Japanese uh, players as well, but the Japanese mm-hmm. players aren't being counted toward your uh, top ten twenty four. Yeah, uh, for Japan, it's only the top. Yeah, right. For uh, Japan, the top one hundred and fifty players. 150 Japanese players uh, qualify for the 2024 Nas- uh, Japan National Championship main stage, uh, whereas North America, Europe, Latin America, Oceania, Middle East, South Africa, and Russia, um, whoever gets the most points the way that it's uh, calculated on that, um, go toward the top 1024. So you can go and play up against like 15 Japanese players in a row Mm-hmm. have your entire day comprised of of Japanese players. And, you know, you you guys are facing off for, for different reasons. Yeah, yeah. So, 
I, I and, found that quite interesting. And this is the first one, which implies the existence of, <laughs> of <more>. a second. <laughs> Is there a Mrs. Uh, Global, <laughs> Global Challenge, Challenge. one? <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of cool. They'll probably yeah. announce the new one whenever this one finishes. And right. We'll and then in Korea, yeah, you you mentioned Korea as well. South Korea is the top 50, 50 players. Right? Yeah. Qualified for people. the 2024 Pokemon Trainers Cup. Yeah, TPK does different things. Yeah. Even more different than both Japan and us. This is interesting. Right at the bottom of the... Victory Road page, which is what we were looking at here. Uh, they give a little bit of history, they Ooh. say. Online competitions are usually a part of the casual gameplay, but they have been featured in the official circuit for some years now. They're one of the few tournaments in which all world regions play together and generally grants national invites in TBC regions and championship points in TBCI regions. Uh, that's true that this used to be a, a very casual thing. I think Players' Cup is what changed that all, right? Yeah. Yeah. When Players' Cup came out, they're like, hold up. We could just oh, do whoa, this online. People, people love this. People love that they can do regionals from home. You can watch the finals at the Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> that's our that's our catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, because going to a regional and trying to watch the finals is it, not great. It's hard. It's yeah. hard. So Nationals could, is great because they set up mm-hmm. like a good amount of stage for you, but uh, for regionals, it's like everyone's kind of like crammed uh, as much as they can. It's like playing musical chairs with a 400 VGC players. Right. It's like, like if you want mm-hmm. if you want to use the bathroom, you're losing your seat is the way that it is. Uh, yeah, right. And like, you know, it's it's less of an experience on the second day because a lot of people go home after the first day. If they lose, mm-hmm. they don't feel the need to be there. Um, so <laughs> the thing that we end up saying every time is, you know what? We can watch the finals from the Airbnb because we're mm-hmm. still very interested in it. We still want to see it, but maybe we don't want to be there for it. Maybe yeah. we burned our wristbands off because we don't want to, mm-hmm. to have them on anymore. We had to commit. Uh, it's funny because in our case, I, we we can watch the finals from Shake Shack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is what we've done multiple times now. <laughs> and you know what? Thank you for that. Because I, I love that. I love going to Shake Shack and, and watching. <laughs> I just love Shake Shack so much. <laughs> Every time Mike comes to the state, States and there's a Shake Shack in town, Mike's going to it. Hey, yeah. guess what? Jersey's getting their first shake, shake, uh, shake shack. Sorry, you tried. You tried I, it so was hard. Hard. Wow. They're getting. We're getting our first one. Uh, this you year. You didn't have one. Nope. Not. It oh. wasn't a New Jersey thing. New York had oh. a couple. We didn't. Wow. Wait, is it Shake Shack? Something's coming here this year. Oh. No, it might have been Shake Shack. Let's let's assume that it is. <laughs> All I'm right. I'm saying it is. Well, cool. Uh, you know what? It's, it's late. (laughs) Oh yeah. If only we weren't playing Power World all day. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) All right, cool. Uh, that is going to be a podcast for us. I thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for joining us on this 201st episode of Pokey Sports, uh, which of course is the muck episode. So. No, it's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't even know what the last one was. I, I, I forgot it already. And we, we knew that we would. Uh, we absolutely, oops, I knocked something over. Knew it? that we would. Uh, Pokemon 200 is mischievous, right? Of course. Oh, so the next one could be anything. <laughs> it could be anything. And Mark we even Rowe. said what it was back then. Murkrow. No. It's no, you know what? Sp- this I think this game is going to be better if I help jog your memory to the Pokemon that we actually said that it was okay. last week. Oh, you know what it was? I, well, I do now because I looked it up because I knew okay. we wouldn't get it. Um, it, it it's, it's like the last Pokemon that you would think of. Great. <laughs> yeah, but like there are so many of them. Unknown. Yeah, yeah there it, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got yeah, it. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. But like it you wouldn't have thought of it, me. right? Yeah, no, never. Yeah, because where has that thing been? What are they going to do? Give it Terra Blast now? Why does it exist? They just all have Terra Blast? <laughs> they, they don't exist right now, right? That's just kind No, of... they don't exist. No. Because Hidden Power doesn't exist. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, now that it's Scald, maybe they just let them get it. 
nobody I, else. I really do think that they should just give all unknowns Terra Blast. Give them uh, Terra Star Storm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just cause. Just, why not? Unknown made Terrapagos, sure. Right. And then all of them can terrestrialize into a new form, into, into a stellar form. And it's just the whole alphabet. What did Unknown do? Like, lore-wise, what did they do? They were oh. little alien alphabets. Oh, Unknown are the janitors of the universe. Their job, for the most part, is to run things from behind the scenes to keep what? the universe from collapsing in on itself. The universe? The universe. They also Letters? create new Pokemon in the presence of Arceus and are omnip- an omnipotent when gathered in one place by the thousands. Unknown is God. Huh. But like Arceus is Pokemon God. But you can't spell Arceus without many unknowns. At least. Six. Yeah. Yeah. At least that many. Unknowns <laughs> A-R-C-E-U and S. Sometimes question mark, but that's more Ooh. like Arceus? Arceus? And then there's Arceus! And that's explanation Exclamation mark. mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you you toss out like, again, you terastalize. And mm-hmm. it becomes um, an ampersand, unknown ampersand. We we don't have one of those. And the nasty one, that's unknown asterisk. Unknown that dollar one's a sign, little spicy. Unknown dollar sign. That one's that one's chill. <laughs> we got parentheses left mm-hmm. and right, curly we got bracket. The, <laughs> got kind of the geeky one, the at symbol. Can't wait for colon. Yeah. Semicolon. Oh, we get to put semicolon and uh, write parentheses together to make a smiley face. Unknown hashtag. Yeah. Unknown mm-hmm. pound symbol. Unknown. Number Surprise! Sign, these don't exist already. Them. When did they add exclamation mark and question mark? Because they don't have the same eyes as the other unknown. You know, they kind of have that half shut eye. I think they. I think that's been there from from the beginning. I wonder what their decision was to. Oh yeah, like why is the exclamation mark like ha- eyes kind of half closed? Because that's like yeah. the exclamation mark. Like you should be eyes wide open, right? Yeah, like, look at these guys. Yeah, like you know they stick out like a sore thumb. They do. They they look kind of bored about it. Well, they're they're like rarely used. You know, they they probably feel pretty bad about that. Uh, the letters are used so much more. Also, the Z doesn't look like a Z. That's no. just me, though. Sorry, Zed. I know you say it oh, differently than I can, us. I can help you out with that. Turn your head to the side a little bit. Oh, other side. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Good. But I'm just saying the S looks more like a Z than the Z does. You're correct. Yeah, they, they should have just kind of flipped that. Yeah. Hey, so that's God. <laughs> the janitor of the universe. The janitor. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's pick a lane here. Which which one is this? God is a blue collar worker, according to Pokemon. Wow! Wow! You know what? Very powerful take from Pokemon. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, this has been Pokey Sports. If you've enjoyed, uh, do something about it. I don't know. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>